Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today we're going to take a look at the house map. There's lots of ways in and out of this structure. Lots of good vantage points, positions to be for drones and breaching charges and all kinds of things. And we're going to take a look at the best tips and tactics for that now. Okay everybody, this is the first spawn position. This is the construction site. This starts at the front doors of the house. You can go up the stairs here to the front door. Over to the right here, we have our first camera position. This is the river dock spawn. And we come up here. We have the garage right in front of us. The front door is over there where the construction site was. Over here is the second outdoor camera. That's the second position. Right over here is the next spawn position. This is the side street spawn. If you start here, the garage is straight ahead of you. And the second camera here is actually the first one that you'll encounter. The next closest spawn position is the APC spawn. If you start here, this is where you'll begin. And the camera will be just off to your right past that tree. And you can go to the house here. The original camera with the construction zone is right over here, straight ahead. Your first interior camera is going to be right up here in the corner. So you can drop that. Let's take a look at the other camera position, too, real quick, that's on this floor. And we're going to find that one in the kitchen here, right above the salad bar, snack bar, whatever you want to call this area. Um, 15 seconds remaining. We also have another camera position down in the basement here, right above the weights and our other camera is going to be in the garage uh, between the car and the boat above the tools right there i've gone around the house and just broken out all the windows so we can use these sight lines right away so i'll show you the way this works with glass he's uh got the scope with the coating on it that allows you to d negate the dark to light penalty so when you see in here you don't really have that penalty going on as much as you would with somebody else he can actually still see in there and this position will give him a sight line into this office here. You can also see into the kitchen a little bit. If you do start in the APC section, what you're going to want to do is, uh, first of all, if you come right over here to the right, you'll have that camera again. This is the one I was mentioning before. Uh, you have this structure here. This is a patio structure. Um, and on the side is this ladder. So if you come up here, you've got these windows and you can see right into these clear as day, especially on the night map. You don't want to stand here because you'll be really easy to hit on top of the structure. But if you drop down, now you've got a really covered position and you can see right into the master bedroom on this side, or you can see pretty good into the kid's bedroom on this side. You know, you can move around and find advantages that will work for you depending on where you think the enemy is. You can also see it into the uh, side door here and a little bit of the stairs. Another position that's really great for sight lines if you're using Glaz or somebody with uh, like maybe Twitch uh, or anybody with an ACOG, this treehouse structure here, if you come up here, it's going to give you really great line of sight. So we can shoot right into the house here, no problem. Uh, we can see the back of the master bedroom there. We can see the door that goes into the bathroom. We've got great line of sight through the kitchen or uh, the kids' bedroom here. You can repel on these portions of the window here. And we're just going to go up here and show you what this looks like. You can take out these windows if you want to and come in through here. I recommend leaving them up. They're uh, just kind of better to cover you as you go up. And you can see down into this section here. Um, you can kind of protect yourself from that. If you wanted to, you could also shoot through the window here um, and get some sight lines there. If you have more of a medium range sight, that might be a good thing to do. On the side here, you'll get these good vantage points that will cover into the room here. And this window will give you into the corner here. You can also see a little bit into the uh, foyer area. This window I wouldn't bother with a whole lot. Uh, you have to repel to break it or use ash to break it. And the vantage point is quite similar to this vantage point. So it's just the risk versus reward for going for that window. It's not really there. If you go through this structure on the outside, 
This will give you overwatch of the entire open living room area, all the way back to that back door back there as well. If you come up here, you're going to have this slotted window that will allow you to have overwatch into these rooms here. You can see the kid's bedroom. We've got the master bedroom here. Coming in here, we've got the area that will go into the workshop. When you play defense in this room, a good spot to be, if you're hunkered down in the corner here behind this, this will protect you from the two windows to your left. And then the only areas you really have to worry about, you also have partial protection from this door. Then this is the only door you really have to worry about when the objective is in here. Um, but you do need to be careful because if somebody comes in through this window and then they uh, throw a grenade at you or something to flush you out, you could be a little stuck. You can also help yourself out by putting out a deployable shield here. This area, if somebody sets up like maybe Tachanka up here, I mean, they can really control this point and wreak some damage. You can, not that there's a lot of use for it, but you can blow an opening in this wall here and then come along this ledge. And uh, if you have maybe some people that are coming in through the bottom here, like if you do this as a defender with a nitro cell and the attackers roll in through the door here, you might be able to get the drop on them where they wouldn't expect it. But then you have the risk of if they come up through the window here, they're going to see you. So a good compromise to that might be coming over here a little bit, um, especially if you have the objective position down here in the living room. When people are set up in here, oftentimes they will go into this back corner because this gives them overwatch to respond to this door or this door or if you come through here. They'll often sometimes set up a uh, some kind of a murder hole here, which will also kind of overlook the weight room. So really they can cover all kinds of vantage points by being in this corner, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna surprise them by coming from right over their heads. Now you'll notice there's not a trap door here. So how are we gonna do that? Well, most of the structures in the game can be destroyed partially that are floor but you have to depend on the material you're using this material out here this tile you cannot breach it if i take out a breaching charge it's red unbreakable surface now if i put it on a wall that's green i can fully blow a hole in that but if i come in here i get yellow what is yellow what's going on with yellow yellow is any surface that can be partially destroyed but not fully and if i come into this section so at the base of the stairs right here, which by the way is the position of the other interior camera, right there in the corner. If I come to this section, right here, and drop this breaching charge, breaching charge deployed. I can now go ahead and open up this section. See, this is the car we were over right before, and I was saying they'll be in this corner right here. So now I can get line of sight and take out some shots in here. Now these um, support ribs are gonna get in your way. I would recommend not trying to engage them when they're horizontal, but trying to find the angle when they're vertical. You'll have a much better time spacing your shots out. Sometimes when you blow this, they're gonna go behind this car for cover. And if you're on this side here, you'll intercept that pretty smoothly. Another thing you can do is if you put a cluster charge here, cluster charges will also work. So if I hadn't blown this hole here, let's say that was still intact, place that there. Now I'm gonna fill this area down below with explosives. And anybody that was there is gonna be pretty much toast. Uh, again, this won't work on these floors here. These are tile floors. This is the laundry room underneath us. We can't get through there. Uh, and we can't get through these. These are kind of like marble floors. Um, those won't work. But any of these wooden floors you can do this with. So this first hatch will go straight down into the office the underneath. And if they're down there for any reason, um, that would be a good line of sight to get the drop on them. You do have to be careful of these furniture that are on the sides, though, as you're trying to like go around the hole. As you try to skirt it, if you're not careful, you could drop down there, so be careful of that. And if the defenders are up here and you have ash to blow that from below and then toss up, you know, some grenades or something would really... And they're usually going to be in these positions if they're defending, right? So they're right here, they're shooting, whatever. If ash blows that charge next to them... If you have a guy sitting in the corner here, he's just going to completely blitz the character that's sitting here. And likewise for the other side. 
Okay, this is a really useless trapdoor here, in my opinion. Um, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. Maybe somebody can figure out a creative way to do it, but I don't see a lot of use. I'm not even going to bother wasting a charge on it. I'm going to show you what it does here. So if you come down here, it opens up into this position. And you're going to fall down pretty much onto the top step here. And that's questionably, I mean, I'm not sure of the use of this. Maybe some creative players can figure something out, but uh, if you have good tips and tactics for that, let me know. This one is going to open up on the laundry room. Setting up the charge. Underneath us here is the weight room, and I'm going to set this cluster charge on the floor here. Right in the corner of the room. And I'm going to go downstairs and show you where that's going to come out. So when we come down here... This is the weight room, and oftentimes there will be a person behind here. They'll be crouched down, maybe watching the stairs, maybe getting ready for anybody to breach through the floor panel here. So if I hit this, I'm going to stay way back so I don't accidentally get taken out here. You'll see, even though that's not a fully breachable surface, the cluster charges still come through and completely decimate that area. So anybody that was in this whole corner of the room will have really gotten it. When you're assaulting the master bedroom, a really good position is going to be to come through the closet if they haven't reinforced it. And you can kind of get behind the bedroom here, the bed here, and uh, get some some good angles on things. And uh, that's a really effective way to come through if they haven't already done so themselves. Uh, you know, if these are reinforced, then you're going to have to cut your way through it or whatever. But this gives you a good line back here. If you want to be more cautious with your approach, you can actually do it on this side instead. And then this wall will give you a little bit of cover as you then move up and then engage from a closer range if that's what you'd rather do. When you're assaulting the upstairs for either the kid's bedroom or the master bedroom, those are a little tricky. You can soften them up by placing cluster charges on windows, either this window or this window here. You can also repel and get any of these uh, side windows along the other side. And that, that's one way to soften up the room. Uh, another thing you can do is you can break the window, you know, not as boldly as I did, maybe hanging upside down or with a breaching charge or whatever, but you can go up top here. And this works for either position. You can uh, come up top, and once you've broken the window, they might come over to it to try to rebarricade it or something like that, and you can go ahead and engage them when they try. Uh, you can also cover the other window the same way. It's a little more dangerous because you can go off the edge here, but uh, you can sort of get an angle on there. But if they're back in that corner, they can also get the drop on you in return. So this one's a little more risky. So one of the problems you're going to have when you assault this particular position when you come through is you're open from this side a little bit and especially this side. So if you have a defender and he's in here and you come through that window, he's just going to rip you to shreds. So be aware of that when you come through. Make sure that there's nothing over there on your side to worry about. Back here, you're generally going to have people entrenched in these positions. The most popular one tends to be this spot right here. I mean, you can see back out to that treehouse there. Of course, the treehouse can see you. Um, and you can cover this window pretty well, covering anybody coming in through here. So it's a pretty thick area. So before we were talking about using the cluster charges, this is another good spot to do it in. You can come up here and just position this right about here. And then let's go downstairs and take a look and see what that's going to open up for us. So if this is your position that's being defended right here, the bomb is in this room. Now we're going to drop down those cluster charges right here in the middle of the room. And here, let's check this out. That is a hard attack to defend against. I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot that they're going to be able to do. It didn't touch the back corner of this room too much. Well, it did over there. But if they were back here, they might have survived. So if you're a defender, you can do this with a nitro cell. I'm doing it as an attacker right now with a breaching charge. That's the difference. You can uh, blow a hole in this wall here. And then you can cover the front door from this side if you, if you want to try to get the drop on them. Especially if you've maybe got it set up in the living room. You can also hop out onto this ledge if you're uh, quick enough. And then you can get the drop on them from above as they come through as well and do things like that. Or you can come back into the corner here 
and cover if you think they're coming from this way. Just be aware that you're vulnerable from this position here. If you think they're going to come up the stairs on you, you can also make a murder hole in the floor and, uh, you know, get some coverage there. Same thing will work from this angle too. You can create a murder hole if you are set up in the uh, master bedroom. And then if you've got like a castle panel, wait for them to try to put a charge on it and then hit them from behind or something. But uh, it's you are gonna see that hole there. So one thing you can do is maybe drop some barbed wire or something on the floor to sort of cover the hole a little bit. So in here, you've got these couches. You can get behind these. You can open up sight lines into the bathroom and Protect yourself there um, or here as well. They will oftentimes come through these windows, so you got to be careful of that. Uh, it's good to set up your reinforcement panels along this wall here. And another place for reinforcement panels is in here. Because if you don't, uh, on the other side of this wall, you have the kids' room. And, I mean, you could maintain a hole here for line of sight if you wanted to, but... It's just such an effective way for them to get through. Um, this wall, it, you can't really do much with because of the furniture on the other side of it. It prevents you from setting anything up here. Uh, you really can't, I mean, you can sort of get a bit of an angle there, but it's really narrow. If I come in on the other side here, you'll see what I'm talking about here. I can maybe put one here too. So you can see those are sort of the openings I can get. Um, Let's open this a little higher. So, you know, I could overlook the stairs here if I wanted to do that. Um, and over here, you know, if I thought that I was going to have a problem with people coming in through the workshop, I could sort of defend this, but they're pretty narrow windows. Also, don't forget that you can always open up sight lines through floors and things like that. This will help you keep an eye on things. But another place you could do it is like on this wall here. You can blow this up and have good overwatch on them as they come up the stairs. Like, because when you're a defender, you can overwatch this area pretty well. But as an attacker, you're going to come through here and you'll see this debris perhaps, but you're going to be trying to roll up here on the objective. You're going to come up here like this. And oh, you know, you're by the time you're here, you're already getting opened up on. And again, this debris can give you it away, so be careful of that. But it's a good line of sight. If you don't want to make as much debris on the stairs, you can just do a hole with a shotgun, a smaller one. Uh, you can make a good murder hole here using the shotgun and kind of achieve sort of the same effect. You know, just make it as big as you want to. And uh, you can even get them just coming right in the door there if you're careful about it. Here's an interesting one. You've got this wall here with furniture on it on both sides, but right here is a clear spot that you can fire through. And you can fire through from the other side. It's just easier for me to see where the cabinets were coming from that side. So you can open up some holes here. And if they're back in that corner there, now you've got a line of sight to what's going on there. In fact, you can kind of walk the stairs here a little bit and change your elevation if you have like an ACOG or something and you're sighting down there. So that's good to know because most of the time if people are assaulting that position, they come through this door here and it becomes something of a kill zone. But there you open up a new sight line and you can get some penetration into this back section here. As a defender, you can hide behind these sections. They're pretty good. Bullets can come through them and they can be blown up by grenades as can this section here. So you need to be aware of that, but it does, uh, you have this metal panel here to protect you. And uh, if you're concerned about anything, you can drop a shield, deployable shield here. You can also put up some reinforced panels here on these walls and then drop a deployable shield here. Uh, that will give you overwatch to this window and the small office. It can be handy to, uh, I, you could do this, it's a risky position, but you could come in here and then catch them coming this way, but your back is to all this stuff. So that could be a little challenging to do, but um, I mean, you certainly could. If you think they're coming in this way, I mean, you could kind of get behind the desk and prepare for them that way, but I don't think there's a lot of entries that are made this way. Um, underneath the upstairs room here, there's this trap door, and right here is where that couch position is. So you can come under here and really open up 
underneath their feet. This is the other position here behind the overturned bookshelf. And uh, you can get them from underneath and, and score some kills that way. So if you come in on the side office here, you can get good line of sight coverage as well on the living room area. This is good for attackers or defenders. You can set up a reverse trap as a defender if they need to go into the living room or as an attacker. You can have somebody uh, take out that that door if that's reinforced or anything like that or barricaded and then uh, you can drop lines uh, if there's anybody back behind that couch in the distance there they can get a good line of sight on them if you're over here on this wall you can get line of sight on the stairs by doing this you can also watch uh, the door at the same time so you can cover both lines of sight as well as anybody coming through the living room when you're playing defense on the garage it's going to be super important to lock this all down so um if this is going to take three panels, so come in here immediately, put up a reinforcement panel, and get the rest of your team to cover the other parts of the door. So you're going to have this one on the side here, and then you're also going to want to come around here and have these two covered as well. When you start around in the garage, the first thing I would do as mute is I would drop a jammer. See how my my ring overlaps this gap here put it right here so that it can't be shot visibly. There's no line of sight on it, but it will jam the path. That's like the first thing you do. Then once you get your team to put up the reinforcement panels, you come along and you set up your jammers down here. This one will cover these. If you put another one here, this will cover between the three panels. You'll have it covered with the two jammers. And then over here, you can put down another one in this position and that'll cover that as well. Um, that's really critical toward locking up this garage. Then that'll be pretty airtight. Uh, there's not much they can do unless they hit it with Thatcher's EMP. If you have nitro cell or smoke grenades or anything like that, you can uh, put them on the stairs here. I like to put them on the underside of stairs because what happens is they come down the stairs and maybe they hear the beeping, but they can't see it. It's actually underneath their feet right here. So as they come around right here, now you've got a, a hole that you can see them as they approach. So right as they come around, boom, you blow it. The thing goes off right next to their head here. And there's not much they can do. They can hear it beeping all they want, but they can't shoot it until they get here. And then you can already detonate it. So that's kind of a nice uh, sneaky thing you can do to them. So you can come into this side entrance here and this will bring you over on the side of the weight room. Uh, and sometimes there's an objective in here. This can be dangerous because when you come through this door, you can be hit from the left side. In fact, sometimes they'll even make a murder hole from the garage and then they'll shoot you through the holes as you come through. Sometimes they'll be behind the weight equipment and they can get you here on this angle. Sometimes they'll be tucked back into the corner here waiting for you to step through. Sometimes they'll be back behind here waiting for you to step through. Other times they could be on the other side of this, just, you know, waiting for you to come through as well. So there's lots of vectors. I mean, you could even be behind here and looking out behind this wall and looking out. So there's lots of ways. If you come through here, you have a lot to worry about. One thing you can do to sort of minimize that a little bit is if you come through here instead. When you blow this and you come through, now, if there's anybody there, you would have taken care of them. If there's anybody directly across from you, you've got a line of sight on them. There's a partial line of sight here, but when you step through, you're gonna have immediate access to anybody here and quick response to anybody here. So really what you have to worry about is when you step through, just checking stairs and hard left. So that's gonna minimize your angle of approach by breaching here instead of coming through the doorway. Now, back to this section here. Sometimes you'll have guys on the other side of this wall, and if you want to flank the garage, this is a good spot to do it. Um, you could go in this corner here, but I recommend this one because this is sort of the one they hide out on. They can... Uh... Where is my valid? Okay, well, we're just going to put it here and say it was there. You know what I was trying to do. So you can come through here. And you'll hit them if they're back there. If they try to run away from it, they'll be right in front of you. And when you come into the room, you've got a good angle on what's going on. Very good position to breach through. So my favorite line of sight is going to be this one here. 
gets you a shot straight into the back. Anybody with a longer range scope, like an ACOG or something, they're going to be able to have a good time with that. If you step in here, you can also cover this area pretty well. You do have to be careful in case they're right here. Before you even breach the garage, you don't even have to breach it to shoot in here because you've got this section here. And if you creep up here, you can sometimes get the drop on somebody, especially if you want to check if they're in that corner there. You'll get a good line of sight on them. Um, or if they're just sort of running around, you can get that there. This is also going to be where you're going to sneak a drone in from. Finally, you have this other door on the side. So there's a car behind this door. You can come in on the left side, but the right side is going to give you the superior way to go because there's a path for you to tuck into right away. So let's go ahead and cut through here. And right away, I can come in here and engage anybody that I happen to have line of sight, but get behind this car quickly. And if there's anybody back here in the corner, I can engage them. And from here, now I can pop up and deal with other threats that are back there. Oftentimes, these will be barricaded, though, so you'll have limited options. You can also, of course, always come through this wall here and get good sight line on anybody behind these positions. Sometimes there's guys that like to tuck in behind this corner, too, and just be aware of that. If you knock a hole in this wall, you can also get line of sight. There's a bunch of stuff behind this wall. So if you're going to breach this wall, do it on the right side, right about here. And that's going to get you the clear line of sight to see into the room. If I were to do it here, I've got stuff in my way and it doesn't work so well. Okay, so now let's take a look at our drones. Um, when you start on the house, the first position you're going to want to run into is the garage here. And when you're rolling around with drones, always say, you know, I'm taking garage, I'm taking upstairs, I'm taking downstairs. So you all wind up in different places instead of going in the same direction. But there's this door on the side here. Go straight through here. If you're fast, even if they're in this room, you can beat them before they put down a signal jammer. And that'll get you right in here. When you come through, the best place you're going to want to go is right underneath the boat. If you're running around in the middle of the room, you're going to get shot quickly. So come under here, see what you can see. You can also sprint across to the car here if you need to. Try to get under things. That's going to be the best thing to do. Um, so some spots that you can go that are really good. You have to remember, when you die, your drone is your camera. You don't have a defender network of cameras. You only have these drones. So if time runs out and you're rolling around and time runs out and that's where you stopped, when you die, that's what you're going to see. Guys, this is useless. This doesn't help anybody. I mean, you can see over here a little, I guess. You know, get into weird positions like this. Try to get onto like a shelf or something so you can see higher up. They're not going to be expecting you to be in these kinds of positions. You know, go ahead and get onto some things like this. And then when you're here, uh, they're not going to be aware that you're there. You know, just weird little spots all over the place. If you're looking straight when you're rolling, your jump is going to be more of a forward jump. If you're looking up, you're going to get that high arc. And you can come into some really, I mean, like, who's going to see your camera back here? Even with the lights on, you're going to get tags and uh, you're going to be hard to spot. Always tuck in underneath furniture whenever possible. Anything to hide your drone. That's what you're going to want to do. Um, try to blend in with your surroundings. Coming in underneath things, super, super useful. When you're zipping around, and that's exactly what you should be doing, zipping around, uh, try not to drive in a straight line. Unfortunately, I get my drone shot all the time, but like the more you're moving around, the more you're jumping and stuff, the harder you are to hit, but the more visible you are. I prefer to be sneaky with my drone because I have a harder time outmaneuvering people, but... Uh, you know, you can get these into some pretty decent places. Wherever you leave your drone is where it's going to be when you die or when other attackers try to use your camera network. Use that to your advantage. Um, one spot I especially like to get is up here. And then you've got good line of sight back into this corner here. You can kind of tuck in on the side if you need to. Nobody's thinking to look for you in these kinds of places. This is where these are the kinds of spots you want to take your drones Putting them in corners can also be good, uh, but putting them into little holes, little nooks, little crannies, always look for them. That's where you want to leave your cameras. Try to avoid doing the tagging if possible, because they're going to know to stop what they're doing and look for that camera. And if you do a verbal tag, a verbal call out, and let your team know what's going on instead, they won't know to look for it necessarily. I do wish they would disable that feature. Uh, I think the you've been spotted feature is not good. I think it's, I mean, it just tells you, uh oh, there's a camera in here. I better go look for it. And that's not necessarily a good thing. 
Um, if I sneak a camera into a good spot, I should be rewarded with a good intel position. Another thing you're going to want to keep in mind is when you're using your drones to give you the widest field of view possible. So like a position like this would be good. It gives you all this coverage, but you're kind of in the open. Um, so what you want to do is try to find a compromise between good coverage and good field of view. Um, you might have a great spot, but it won't necessarily give you a good view on anything. But as long as you can get them into positions where they're not going to be expected, you're going to be able to make some use of these things. So guys, that's been our look at the house map. You're really only going to be limited by your creativity. I've shown lots of different things that you can try, but there's so many more things. This is not an absolute list. There's no way to make an absolute list for destruction in this game. You can take out walls anywhere in all kinds of interesting ways. And, uh, you know, just keep adding to it. If you guys have any great ideas for other things, go ahead and let me know. Drop a line in the comment section and share your tips and strategies. There's so many ways, different sight lines, different walls to blow up, places to put drones. I mean, it's almost unlimited. But once you start opening your eyes to what you can do, there's lots to play with here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the tips and strategies. And I hope that you get a chance to use some of these and maybe help your game out a little bit. So we have an exciting giveaway to announce. I have a copy of Rainbow Six Siege on the Xbox One to give away. It's a download code and it can be yours. Here's what you need to do. I want to have any new subscriber have a chance to get a shot at this. So in the comments below, any new subscriber, make the comment in capital letters, RECRUIT. All capitals, the word RECRUIT. And then after that, share with me why you want a copy of Siege. I don't want to forget about the fans that have been around my channel for a while though, and you're going to get a chance to win too. I only have one copy of the game, so I'm going to pick one new subscriber and one veteran subscriber, and it's going to be a 50-50 chance between those two selections of who will get the game. If you're a veteran subscriber, write VETERAN in the comments, all capitals, the word VETERAN. And then likewise, tell me why you'd like a copy of the game. I'll be collecting submissions all through the month of December, and then just before Christmas, the winner will get their copy sent to them directly. Thanks everybody for watching, we'll see you next time.